Okay, Mr. Chair, we are live on the YouTube and the sound check is done. Can't hear you, Michael. Have to unmute after the lunch break, I guess. Okay. Good afternoon. Due to COVID-19, Committee of Adjustment public hearings are being conducted virtually by electronic means through WebEx webinar, an online digital platform, and streamed on the Toronto City Planning YouTube channel. Participants who have registered in advance will be able to make their presentations to the committee using WebEx webinar, an online um, which is moderated by city staff. Anyone wishing to view the hearing may do so by watching on YouTube. Participants who have registered in advance will be connecting with their computer, tablet, smartphone, or telephone and have the option of participating via or audio only. All participants will automatically be muted on entry. When your item is called, each participant will be unmuted by the moderator one person at a time. We also ask that you mute your devices until you are called on to speak. Those participating by video appearance will be temporarily upgraded to participant when your item is being held. During this time, your camera will be enabled. You will only be visible during your five minutes allotted speaking time. At all other times, your video will be disabled and you will be reinstated as an attendee. Committee of Adjustment staff will share presentation submission deadline. Members of the public and applicants are not allowed to use share screen or any other panelist controls during a video appearance. The host will remove you from the panelist role if you fail to respect this instruction. Land acknowledgement. We acknowledge that the land we're meeting on is traditional territory of many nations, including the Mississaugas of the Credit, the Anishinaabe, the Chippewa, the Haudenosaunee, and the Wendat peoples, and is now home to many diverse First Nations, Inuit, and Métis peoples. We also acknowledge that Toronto was covered by Treaty 13 with the Mississaugas of the Credit. In accordance with Sections 45 and 53 of the Planning Act, 1990 as amended this meeting of the Committee of Adjustment of the City of Toronto is called to order. The Committee of Adjustment consider, uh, considers applications for variances from the provisions of the zoning that apply to the property, permissions to extend or alter lawful non-conforming uses, and consents to sever properties to create new lots. Anyone in attendance today who wants to receive a copy of the decision of the committee on an application must submit a written request for a decision by email. Please ensure that you include your name, address, and email address because the Committee of Adjustment and the Toronto Local Appeal Body will be sending notifications and appeal updates by email. If you do not agree with the decision of the committee, Decisions may be appealed to the Toronto Local Appeal Body, TLAB, or in some limited circumstances to the Ontario Land Tribunal. Appeal instructions are set out at the bottom of the decision of the committee. The hearing procedure is as follows. I will call each item in the order listed of the agenda starting at number 19. And um, in making your submissions where an application is uncontested, the agent or app applicant may proceed with their presentation if desired. When the committee does not require presentation, applicants are to advise the chair should they wish to address the committee. And, uh, the, the committee may ask questions and then take the matter into the committee for a decision. Each speaker, including the applicant or agent, will be given a maximum of five minutes to address the committee. And the clock is up on the screen and we'll comment when you're reaching the five minute marks and mark and ask you to. In the committee, please start off uh, clearly by stating your name and address for the record. Please remember to confine your remarks to the matters outlined in the application. The applicant or agent proceeds first and makes their presentation to the committee on the application. Please note that the committee may not entertain revisions to proposals made at the hearing today. The committee may decide to defer the application if substantially revised in order to ensure that the revised application is accurate and that all those entitled to notice of the application have been informed of changes. Then individuals either in support or opposed to the application will be invited to speak. Committee members may ask questions of each speaker after they finish their presentation. All other speakers have finished. The applicant or agent is given a further five minutes in order to rebut the, only those issues and answer those questions that were raised by the speakers. 
That will then mark the end of the discussion on the matter and the application is then taken into the committee for a decision. Do any um, of the panel or staff have any declarations of interest to declare on the matters before us on this afternoon's agenda? Okay, if none, um, I guess we have the one preliminary matter to deal with, which is the um, the issue of whether the neighbor on item number three has uh, has ever to be located. Uh, I saw we had email addresses on them, but uh, they will not be joining us today. So you can proceed with your motion now. Okay. So uh, I guess we'll have the go back to the uh, applicant who's been patiently waiting. I assume he's uh, he's still on the line. Anxiously awaiting the uh, Nathan Proctor, Mr. Proctor. Thank you for your patience. Hi, thank you for hearing me again. Yes, Nathan Proctor, applicant for 55 Pinehurst. Okay, so uh, just to remember, we had a uh, a neighbor who had written a letter in and the additional material said they wished to participate and did provide photos, but no uh, verbiage to go along with the photos. I guess they speak for themselves. And mm -hmm. um, we were just we had already heard from the applicant and uh, we're just like getting for a motion at the time that we should bring in a wait try to make these uh the neighbors at 53. yes i called him when we went on lunch so i had a previous conversation with him and he uh he's actually in support although i don't have that in writing he's in support of the uh the work okay uh members Anyone ready to uh, weigh in with a motion? So just to clarify, the uh, person who sent, the neighbor who sent the photographs in, are they now in support? Is that what you're telling me? Yes. So it's, there's John Phillip, who was the gentleman who sent photos in without really any context. Um, I did speak with him. He had concerns and he sent those photos in particularly because he uh, likes the current buffer of those trees from uh, 55 Pinehurst to 53 Pinehurst, and he wanted to confirm that nothing was touching those. And uh, I did send him a copy of the tree protection plan, and we are building hoarding around all those trees. So he was, uh, okay. he was satisfied with that. Okay, thanks for clarifying. Okay, um, so is anyone prepared to weigh in with a motion? I'm prepared to uh, make a motion. Um, I think given sort of the unique uh, character of this lot, it's on a corner lot and there's not really much of a back or uh, side yard there. So really it's their their one side yard functions as their rear yard and they're, they're left there to uh, put their addition. Um, so I'm going to move for approval um, that the variances requested are minor in nature and meet the four tests in the Planning Act. And that would be subject to uh, forestry condition number two. Thank you, Mr. Palmer, for that motion. We have a seconder for that. Ms. Alderson, thank you. Any comment? No. Okay, all in favor? You have unanimous approval. Thank you, and thank you for your, thank you. for your patience, Mr. Proctor. No problem. Okay. Okay, so going back then to um, where we were to starting the afternoon. Oh, yeah, we have the deferral memo to go through. Uh, I think there are one or two. Okay, item number 19. And uh, Madam Secretary, you can do the introductions this afternoon, please. Sure. For item 19, planning is asking for a deferral, and I believe the agent is agreeing to that. They've also asked for it. Okay, the is recommending you. refusal. And the agent is, uh, yeah, because it was um, item two and six. The six means is the request of the agents. It's Matthew Fung. Welcome, Matthew. Is Matthew Fung Matthew, on the line? Yeah. Hello. Hi, Hello. Matthew. Hello. Hi. Good afternoon, Mr. Chair and uh, committee, Matthew. 
Welcome. Do you hear me? So you're in agreement, commit both you and committee community planning are looking to have this matter deferred, correct? Correct. That's right. Would you like to just state for the record the reason for the deferral and uh so uh after a, a meeting with uh community planning uh it was uh in our best interest to uh revisit the design just to shrink it a little bit because the fsi was a little on the high side uh the depth was a little long and the front yardage was uh, uh, too encroaching so we're going to revisit the design um just based off of what planning recommends and uh yeah we don't want to upset any neighbors at the same time so uh that's what we're uh that's why we're deferred okay you are the only person on the line on this application so uh members any questions for mr mr fun or someone ready with the motion of deferral no one has any questions i'm prepared to uh make a motion for deferral mm -hmm. um and uh Thanks for being so agreeable to that. So that's uh, that's good. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Hey. Okay. Thank you very much. Thank you. Seconded for that motion. All second. Armor. Thank you. All in favor? Okay. The matter is unanimously deferred, and we'll see you here again. Thank you. Uh, okay. The other item on the deferral memo for reason number two uh, is. Number 2137 Shorncliffe. So we can go to that. The speaker for that is Stephanie Matviva, as well as we have the neighbor at 39 Shorncliffe on the line. Good afternoon, Mr. Chair, members of the committee. My name is Stephanie. I'm the agent for the application. Okay, so the reason you're on the planning memo uh, as um, Planning is asking this matter be deferred for the reason and number two being a submission of a complete application for permit. Oh, no, sorry. That's the I'm on the wrong conditions. Excuse me. No problem. I have to go back to the other consolidated memo. Which is not opening up for some reason. Um, so okay, okay, so are, you, are you in agreement with? Yeah, sure. If you wouldn't mind. Just in order to provide adequate time for staff to appropriately review the application and discuss any concerns, obtain potential changes, and or secure revised submission material from the applicant. That's all. Thank if you. Can, so if I can this add is in the, uh, in the planning memo. They they specifically say they want it deferred until the pre-application consultation for the uh, development of the site for the three industrial con condominiums is reviewed with staff. So that's in the planning. Hmm. Yeah, it's a specific memo on this. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, so um, going back to the agent, so are you in agreement with the deferral request from community planning? I am not. You're not. And the reason being, because this is a very specific one where they've actually given cogent reasons rather than just ticking off a box saying they haven't had enough time. I understand. We have had okay. conversations with city planning. Um, so those efforts are underway to resolve areas of concern. We did make efforts to try and schedule the pre-application meeting prior to this committee of adjustment, just due to scheduling that was un, it was unable to be accomplished. So we would like to present to the committee and have our application heard. Okay. Uh, no, you know, they're saying that a stealth storage building is not a permitted use in employment industrial zone, and they're of the opinion that an application for change in use is not minor in nature, and a zoning bylaw amendment application would be the required process to construct a self storage facility that is currently not permitted in the E1-0 zone, which applies to the property. So they're saying they wish it to be deferred, and as Mr. Palmer just said, so the pre-application consultation for the three industrial buildings is reviewed by staff and otherwise they're recommending we refuse so given that um if you wish to proceed i guess uh we have to um have the committee vote on that so if you can please i just give you some time to elaborate on the reason why we should proceed today um Unless, and in light of the fact that the community planning is saying otherwise the application should be refused, I guess for that reason alone, it's not a permitted use. I understand. So just by way of context for 
yourself, mm -hmm. chair and members of the committee, there have been many conversations with city planning staff. This project has been, we've been trying to get it underway for close to a year now. Um, so we understand that planning staff do have concerns with the permitted use as well as the site design. As I've mentioned, we have had those conversations. Efforts have been made to revise the application from what was initially provided to city staff mm -hmm. for comment. Now, we understand that self-storage is not a permitted use as of right within this Okay, zone. so you know what? Okay, yeah. So I'm just saying you, you want to proceed. Uh, I, I take it it's your it's your option to proceed at your peril. Uh, we'll have to see if the committee agrees um, with whatever consequence. Uh, committee members, any questions for um, the applicant? As applicant, I take it you're a, you're a professional planner. I am. Okay. Um, any questions for the the applicant, or is uh, some ready to make a motion on the deferral request by staff, which the applicant uh, does not wish to uh, wishes to proceed here, saying that they've had many discussions with staff and uh, need to get on with matters. Um, Mr. Question. Yeah, is there a, a traffic um, report planning a parking justification report in support of this? I, I couldn't remember if I saw one or not. No Mr. Problem. Chair, uh, three, Mr. Chair, yes, there is. Sorry, staff, you were. It's on the screen now. Oh, okay. BA group, okay. Right, because variance five is a large uh, parking deficiency. So, um, okay, um, Mr. Palm, you have your answer. So, again, on the issue of the deferral being requested by staff, the applicant is um, not. She wishes to proceed. You know, I I have experience with these pre-application consultations, and they're a bit of a pain. Um, and in this case, it's almost a chicken and egg thing, where some people might say you need your minor variance before you get your site plan, and yada yada, but. The pre-application consultation allows all the various departments to comment on the site plan and what different aspects may come out, what comments they may have. It seems to me when you're looking for a, a variance of such a large magnitude for both use and for the number of parking spots that uh, maybe they should have the pre-application consultation first and then um, find out what other uh, things may be tied to that and then come to the committee for their approval. To see where, especially where planning staff uh, stand on the specifically the use. That's my recommendation. Then would be for deferral. Okay, there was a second for that motion. Both hands went up. I'll take uh, Ms. Alderson slightly ahead of Ms. Ruddick. Uh, so I guess all in favor. Okay, the matter is uh, deferred. Okay, so we'll see the applicant back here uh, once they can. Uh, uh, accomplish that and uh, perhaps we'll get some comments from other city agencies as Mr. Palmer suggested. Okay, so uh, that matter is deferred. So now we can go back to the top of the agenda, which is now item number 20, given that 19 has been deferred. And number 20 is 134, the Kingsway. Trying to scroll over here. Okay. My Sorry, computer. Mr. Chair, there was a speaker for 37 Shorncliffe. So oh. I just want to let them know, uh, Daryl oh. Croft. Yeah, okay. I, okay. Apologies for that. Again, given the fact it was deferred, I don't, you know, it would have uh, been interesting to see what the applicants. Uh, what the neighbor's position was, but I would imagine he would be probably okay with the deferral. He will be re-notified. Okay, can you, I'm um, having some trouble with my computer here. Can you uh, introduce the, the uh, next slide for the Kingsway? Madam Secretary, Barb? Sorry, I was muted. Yeah, item 20. 134, yep. the Kingsway, you have a revised list of variances, plans, and waiver before you where they've modified variance number one and deleted variance number seven. You have an email from the agent, presentation materials, a planning report where they've recommended a condition, and two form letters in support. 
Okay, thank you. Okay, the speaker for this is Sandra Gava, the agent for the applicant. Hi, good afternoon, Mr. Chair. Good afternoon. Um, I see you've made some changes. I take it that was at the request of city planning? It was, it was with discussion with city planning. Okay, I'm having trouble speaking, if you can try to speak up. So, um, and this is what they requested? Yes, they requested a reduction in coverage and elimination of the side yard platform variance. Okay, and you're, uh, I see you have given us supporting materials and two letters of support here. Okay, with the planning condition. Uh, let's see if, I don't know if anyone feels they and need a And there's an urban forestry condition as well. Yes, uh, does anyone feel they will want a presentation from uh, the agent? Or uh, if not, um, let's see if anyone has any questions. Um, would you like to advise the committee of anything rather in, in particular? I uh, know we agree with the planning report and the conditions um, on that report and urban forestry. Just here if you have any questions. Okay, thank you. Uh, any questions or was someone ready for a motion? I'm ready to make a motion if there's no questions. Thank you, Ms. Reddick. Um, move that we approve this application subject to the conditions from planning with suspect to tying it to the forestry condition number two. Okay, thank you. Seconded for that, Ms. Alderson, thank you. All in favor, have unanimous approval. Thank you, Ms. Gava. Thank you very much. We'll see you again. Thank you. So 21 has been deferred, so we'll move on to item number 22, 93 7th, 17th Street. We only have, uh, we have one speaker on that, Mr. Lacassano. Um, this is an application to construct a new detached dwelling for an attack in the secondary suite in the basement. And there are two variances. And we have a pre-presentation from the applicant, uh, planning report recommending uh, condition of approval. Uh, Urban Forestry is recommending condition number one, and then we have Metrolink's advisory. Welcome, uh, Mr. Lacazano. Mr. Chair, uh, thank you so much. It's uh, Enzo Lacazano from ArchTWG. Um, we this this act application was actually heard uh, before. Uh, we recently or uh, were retained uh, by the owner. Uh, worked with the planning department and the designer. Um, to bring these variances to more suitable uh, for the area. Um, we think we have a pretty strong uh, application here, uh, very much in keeping with what's in the area. Uh, we did submit some photos of, uh, of current projects that have just been completed. Um, we're really the, these variances are well within what's uh, been approved in the area. Uh, the height variance for the wall height is a little bit skewed uh, because the majority of wall is at seven meters. Uh, the eight point four seven is just a uh, result of a, a vertical wall to pick up the uh, sloped roof, uh, which is really not part of the uh side uh main wall itself so right, that's the situation the community planning is asking for the condition right to uh... correct correct so that we don't build it in line so uh there was clarification with uh with planning uh on that item but uh, we feel that this meets all the uh the tests and uh we hope we can get your support or that that's actually one of the projects uh, next door um, okay yeah the one that's popped up there so okay so following the refusal uh back uh they came back and uh, retained a new agent new designer and went back to the starting block and uh came up with this design which appears to uh not present there's no objection letters and planning is okay subject to a condition on that wall height that you just described uh, members, any questions for Mr. Lacassano or someone ready to weigh in with a motion? Uh, 
I uh, have a recommendation. Um, I'll move for approval. Variances requested are minor in nature and meet the uh, four tests in the Planning Act, um, subject to planning condition uh, tying it to the um, site plan July 28th remain wall height and the uh, on the west elevation and subject to um, forestry condition number one. Thank you, Mr. Palmer. Do I have a seconder for Mr. Palmer's motion? Thank you, Ms. Alderson. All in favor? You have unanimous approval. Thank you, Mr. Luckasan, and we'll see you again. Thank you. Okay, be well. Um, next application is item, the rest of the afternoon, we have uh, all items that were previously deferred. So this matter was deferred from the April 5th, uh, 2022 hearing, 47 Harlton Crescent. Um, it is um, an application to construct a new detached dwelling with a attached garage. Uh, six variances are, are um, we have a cover letter, applicant submission, planning is recommending a conditional approval. Um, we have um, metro advisory and we have support. And um, this, we have then also three letters of opposition. So on this application, we have uh, several speakers. We have uh, uh, the agent, as well as the homeowner present, to guest on the line, but we'll hear from the agent, Pedro Pimental, as well as we have the neighbors at, 40, at 45 and uh, Harleton and 465 uh, and 463 Silver, Silverthorne registered to speak on this matter. So Mr. Pimental, welcome. And urban forestry is looking for condition number two. And we have a letter confirming uh, in the additional materials that all the windows in the east elevation will be opaque glass. I guess to appease uh, someone. Um, Mr. Pimentel. Good afternoon, Mr. Chair and the committee members. Um, Pedro Pimentel, I'm the architect for this project. Um, so um, as you said, the, um, this uh, application was deferred back in April the 5th. Um, we because uh, it was requested by community planning in order to revise the drawings and uh, reduce FSI height, number of stories, and size of platforms, as well as uh, eliminate the the twelve you know from the twelve variances we had. Mm -hmm. So we, we after several uh, revisions, we we came up with a proposal that meets community planning uh, um, approval. Uh, subject to one condition that we, I, I can speak further on about that. It's about the east elevation. And then we reduce the variances to six. Um, uh, we have, uh, we spoke with the neighbors. We have uh, about 40 neighbors in support with a lot of uh, support. And um, uh, we had a very extensive conversations with the neighbor on 45 Halton Crescent. I know she's uh, she's uh, here to speak as well, and uh, she will talk about that as well. And uh, so the variances are basically related with the FSI that came back from uh, over one one point two to zero point ninety four. That's that meets the uh, requirements from committee planning. Uh, the house is two and a half story, and um, basically uh, we've submitted the pictures of the neighbors' uh, houses that already got built and uh, it's keeping uh, with uh, similar houses in the area. And um, we think that uh, these uh, variances are minor and meets uh, all, the, all the tests and we were hoping for your support. Okay, thank you. Any questions for Mr. Pim Pimentel before we hear from the neighbors? Okay. Um... In that case, the first neighbor on the list registered to speak is Zyrene Martins, 45 right next door. And we uh, have uh, a letter on the on file. Yes, good afternoon, Mr. Chair and committee members. Um, I think we're okay. As Mr. Pimentel has said, we uh, have had some conversations and we've gone back and forth and I think we're okay with things right now as they stand. Okay. Um, that brings a point in your letter, and then we have the, in the additional materials, a letter from the agent that all windows in the east 
elevation yes. with the opaque glass. So just a question while I have you on the line for staff. Um, Barb, are we in, is that something that the committee can impose as a condition of approval uh, as opposed to it being a private, uh, you know, a agreement or a letter written uh, from the neighbor, uh, given that, you know, community planning did mention this issue as well? Barb, it again. So the only condition that planning has recommended is to tie it to the site plan based on the east elevation. Okay, would that so show it opaque to... glass? Would that show opaque glass uh, to pull it up? The problem is, is that if it doesn't, then how can you tie yeah, what's it to the enforcement? Elevation? Yeah, and what's the enforcement? And what if they sell the house and the new owner says, I don't like this opaque glass? That's my question. At this point, we have a letter. We have, uh, yeah, community yeah, planning the, mentions the fact that the majority of the east side windows is 0. 0.61 meters away from the east side lot line. But the east um, side lot windows are in set and are located 1.22 meters. meters. Yes. So the question is, this agreement or the statement, we're gonna we're gonna put in opaque glass, uh, just in the interest of the neighbor. Uh, what? What enforcement uh, is, is, would the committee be able to uh, attach that as a condition of approval? I mean, what the chair says is correct. If someone were to replace the window or it breaks, is there any onus to maintain it as an opaque? The, the problem is the elevation doesn't show opaque glass. And the reason they're trying to tie it to the site plan and the east elevation is to ensure that that those windows are only in that portion that is set back because if you look at the site plan they are that portion of the house has a bigger setback than the uh, the walls on either side of that so community plan specifically did not mention opaque glass but it's something that the, the parties themselves have uh, have agreed upon I mean, if they want to do that in good faith, and that's something, if they have a good relationship, they can do. Um, it doesn't necessarily have to be from the committee. Okay. Can I just ask? But the windows will be set back 1.2 meters. They're not facing my door or any of my windows. Yeah. So if you if we show the site plan, it'll sh it'll show you that that portion of the house has a bigger setback than the walls on either side of that okay where it shows the 1.22 uh, okay and then me and so we have we're in the middle of hearing from ms martins uh -huh. and then we have a few others uh, another speaker as well so can you do you want to continue your submission i'm sorry that i sort of interrupted on that issue of the uh the opaque glass that the neighbor has agreed to so sorry to interrupt you can certainly proceed if there's more you have to know if you wish to say Oh, are you speaking to me, Mr. Chair? Yeah. Irene Ross? Yes, oh, no, to, no, that's uh, Irene. My, my concern okay. is, yeah, I just want to make sure those windows are set back 1.2 meters. They're not facing my door or my windows. Yeah, that is shown on the site plan, correct, Madam Secretary okay. Treasurer? So that they are being tied to that. Okay. Okay. Correct. Thank you. Okay, so the next speaker is Ali Labed at 465 Silverthorne. Welcome, Mr. Abed. Yes, good afternoon, Mr. Chairman and uh, members of the, uh, the panel. Uh, yeah, just to let you know that this is the first time I attend such a meeting. And uh, I, ha I am on the south, uh, the west side of the house, of the new house being built. And yes. my, my concern is about uh, light limitation and, uh, and uh, uh, privacy. Uh, for the light limitation, I see that it's a big house, and it's for it's regarding variance number one. It is uh, going from eighty percent of the area lot being built to ninety four percent. So uh, I would like to, to to object to that because it's a bigger house that would limit light, and that would uh, also uh, will have less green in that area. 
that's my first concern. And the last, the second and the last one is uh, variance number four, which talks about uh, going from an elevation from the ground of from 1.2 meters to 179 meters, about 50 centimeters higher, which means that I guess that the 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 uh, the house will be 50 centimeters hi uh, higher. My concern there is about the uh, the privacy. I I believe there is a, a back balcony, and that balcony on the back uh, is going to be at a certain height. And I'm 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 just wondering. I mean, uh, my backyard is just going to be. Uh, uh, it from that uh, balcony, they would overlook my backyard. These are my two concerns. Yeah, and I see, Mister, uh, that that you're located like this. Your your backyard faces the side yard of the subject property. It's like a key lot situation where your your backyard faces the side yard of this house and the correct. Yeah. Okay. Um, okay, thank you for letting us know what your concerns are. Committee members, do you have any anyone have any questions for Mr. Labed? And if no questions for Mr. Labed, we'll go back to the last speaker, which is Mr. Uh, Labed's neighbor on the other side, 463 Silverthorne Avenue, Maria Videra. Welcome, Maria. Hi. Uh, thank and, you. And for Maria's in the same location as Mr. Had, had, uh, Ed, other than she's one house further removed. So her backyard is like at the very a pie shape right at the very back of that lot. Yes. Uh, uh, good good afternoon, uh, Mr. Speaker and uh, members of the committee. Uh, thank you for letting me, allowing me to speak. I also agree with um, Mr. Ali Labed. Uh, we have the same, we share the same concerns about the, this new uh, proposal for uh, 47 Harleton. Um, so I am, a, we're very strongly opposed to the variances that they're proposing. Um, and I, in a, in a, uh, I agree with, uh, and I'm concerned with the same uh, changes, uh, requested variances to the zoning uh, bylaw. Uh, I'll, all six of the variances. We like the city to to maintain to adhere to the uh, original zoning bylaws, which permitted the original uh, home uh, from the time it was er erected. And uh, and just in general, like we are enjoying our property, and uh, at at the moment. We don't. Well, we just see green space. We see mature tree in that uh, is uh, intersecting with our backyard. We see sky, um, and I'm concerned that this new dwelling is going to be encroaching on our property, on our backyard, uh, which is also limit will limit our light and uh, enjoyment of the property, invasive to our privacy. Uh, may create more noise since the structure is closer in proximity. And um, we 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 are very concerned as neighbors. Uh, we would like to continue our enjoyment um, living at 463 Silverthorne with our all our neighbors. And uh, we would like the city to protect our uh, our our concerns and and stick to the zoning bylaws and not permit these variances to go through. Um, also, I'm um, there's also the cons conservation and the environment is a priority and nobody's mentioned that. But with overdevelopment, um, we're we enjoy like a lot of the natural wildlife in the neighborhood, which includes birds, uh, squirrels, and so on. And uh, their their homes are in their backyard. We, we enjoy them uh, on a daily basis. And this build, this new building will, will really have an adverse effect on the natural 
Mm -hmm. um, it habitat okay. of these of this wildlife, which also it, it it adds to our enjoyment. You know, we have to be in in <laughs> in harmony with our um, you know our environment. I'm going to see is a brick wall. Yeah, we're, we're just going to look at the structure, which will encroach and protrude out into our view and also diminish the light. Escape trees. Down. And we're also concerned about the water runoff. Uh, so if there's more hardscape surfaces, yeah. there may be more, and it's a higher elevation. So we're sitting at a lower elevation. So we're concerned about that, the flooding. And initially, they the same footprint as original. Stay in line with the other homes. Decided, yeah, not in, not and also. Me Ma'am, yeah, you, are you done? I can't hear you. I hear your husband in the background, or someone else with giving you uh, notes. Yes, it's it's my husband. Okay. He lives here you. with me. Yeah, yeah I know. I know. You only have one speaker, but here's here's the way it works, ma'am. Just I don't want you to feel it's very aggrieved. There is no length variance. The total variance is about 30 square meters on two floors. So if the house is 15 square meters on each floor, bigger than what is permitted under the bylaw. So I don't think that's going to scare away all the squirrels and raccoons. We're not. We don't look at it. You, you mentioned about how it is now. Unfortunately, that's not the test. The test is not how it is now. The test is what's permitted under the bylaw. That's what the committee looks at. They look at what's committed under the bylaw and how that is at variance with what's proposed. They don't look at what's there now, which may be a lot less than what's permitted under the bylaw, what people get used to. But yeah. they are, like I said, only 30 square meters over on their floor space index. Divide that by two. So well, I'm saying this is this is not something that's terribly egregious compared to what we see uh, in terms of redevelopment. So um uh, Thank I guess you for clarifying that, um, Mr. Yeah. I just wanted you to think that this is not a, ma a monster uh, in terms of what's per compared to what's permitted, uh, because okay. you seem to have that impression. But anyway, let's see if anyone has any questions for you. Um, I just wanted to just weigh in with that. Um, yeah. And now we'll we, go back we, to Mr. Pemmental. So according to what the city allows, we're just opposed to the variances that they're asking for and we would like the city to just stick with the the stick with what's permitted yes with what's permitted okay. correct and the window's not facing okay. just privacy loud and clear thank you um so i guess that was the last speaker uh we heard from mr labed ms videra and ms martins who seemed satisfied next door uh so we'll go back to mr pemental for his rebuttal Uh, yes, uh, thanks for uh, the neighbors that came uh, and uh, in, include some um, opinion about this uh, project. So the project itself, uh, as Mr. Sherman uh, mentioned, uh, complies with uh, most of the items of the bylaw, including uh, 17 meters depth, uh, height, and um, so forth. So it's, it is in keeping with uh, typical houses in the neighborhood. Uh, I think the problem is with the with the fact that uh, the those two neighbors uh, are basically on the corner lot, and we will be facing this house with this with the backyards. Um, uh, the first uh, neighbor that spoke regarding the privacy, I think, uh, if you can see on the drawings, we we were careful to provide balconies, screen balconies with 1.5 meter height, which means they will not be subject to any um uh, overview from the from the balconies uh, on both sides uh, including the top floor and the main floor balcony uh his concerns about the height at the front at variance number four it's just a, te a technicality of the of the front porch uh, and the the point for point point five meter is it does not uh, reflect the existing it's just the average grade is smaller um Anyway, I, I, I still think that this is a, a very valid uh, proposal in keeping with the neighborhood. And I still think we meet the, all the tests. Uh, 
and and that, yep. that's my presentation right i think um you know the fact that it's a key lot situation for the neighbors on silverthorne is you know adds to sort of a normal um hesitancy to change because of it's not you know like your next door neighbor it's the way it uh, correct it correct. affects yeah. the property so mr labette is closer than ms videra Ms. Martins is closer, and there's another neighbor on the other side that hasn't weighed in. Correct. Uh, so, members, any any questions for Mr. Pimenthal? Uh, and if no questions, or, or for any of the other speakers, or any questions, and if not, let's take it into the committee for a uh, discuss for uh, a decision with some uh, a motion with some commentary, please. Uh, I'm ready for a recommendation. Um, looks like a lot of work has been done to address the concerns of the planning department and to address the concerns of uh, at least some of the neighbors and um, some of the other neighbors I think would only be satisfied if nothing new was built. So um, given all that, I will move for approval. Variances requested are minor in nature and meet the four tests in the Planning Act. That would be uh, subject to um, planning condition um, tying it to the site plan and elevations dated July 27th regarding the east uh, yard setback and subject to forestry condition number two. Thank you, Mr. Palmer. The seconder for Mr. Palmer's motion. Thank you, Ms. Alderson. All in favor? Unanimous approval. Thank you, Mr. Pimentel. Thank, Thank you. you to the neighbors. Thank you. Um, I hope all works out for everyone. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, next application is again uh, 49 Arcadian Circle, deferred from the May 5th, 2020 hearing. It's an application to construct a second story rear addition above the existing dwelling fences. Uh, we have a cover letter, forestry, a memo forestry is looking for a refusal. Uh, and we have the materials from the other, um, from last hearing. If I thought I saw there is, oh yeah, um, planning is recommending a condition of approval. We have supporting material, including the Long Branch checklist that's been completed and uh, presentation materials. The speaker on this application is Franco Romano. Good afternoon, Mr. Chairman, Franco Romano here on behalf of the owner. And if, I, if staff can help bring up my uh, first slide, the supporting material. That's great. Thank you. Cars. So, sir, this is a, a proposal that involves uh, replacing the existing bungalow with a two story dwelling and replacing the existing detached garage with a new detached garage in the backyard. It's an L shaped property. Just a presentation material. It's an L-shaped property, so it fronts onto the north side of Arcadian Circle. And a driveway access to the existing detached garage is off of 28th Street. Can we get Mr. Romano's uh, presentation up while he's speaking? The system is currently Please. causing a bit of issues, and the presentation was kicked off. I'm trying to bring it up now as we speak. Okay. Okay, we can pause until uh, that happens. Thank you. Adam, do you want me to try? The issue is, is it appears for a moment for me to select on and to share, and then immediately disappears, and I can't hit the share button in time. Um, there are no area residents interested in speaking to this file as a note. Franco, you you want to look at the submission of photos? Uh, well, I'm I'm sure if the panel members have it, I can just speak to them. Um, okay, you do. Uh, you know, I'm happy to proceed. Without them. having on the board, we have the materials all in front of us, so perhaps you can let us know what to look at. There we go. 
As a reminder, there's no area residents on the call to speak. Yeah, we realize. Okay, so we should be on item number 24. There we go. Excellent, thank you. Much appreciated, Barb. So we will see, and I'm just gonna um, look at the site itself. So the, the existing dwelling and garage is shown in gray. And you'll see that the proposed dwelling and garage with the thick black outline overlaps both the existing dwelling and the existing garage. They're clearly larger than what exists, but larger basically in terms of length, not so much in terms of width. The one side yard setback for the dwelling on the south side, which is a circle number two, is actually wider than the existing side yard setback. And you'll see that the dwelling on the other side, uh, the, the, uh, the east side of the, uh, of the site is further away from the lot line than the existing dwelling. The, uh, I'll speak right now to the trees. So urban is recommended refusal based on variance number one, which is the floor space index affecting the ability to plant trees or the, and the ability to protect trees. So the only trees that are um, around the subject site are in the boulevard. You'll see that along Arcadian Circle and off of 28th Street. There is no construction that's proposed to either injure or remove those trees. And the proposed floor space index located well away from any mature tree. There is no tree being impacted by the proposed floor space index or by any of the variances that are being proposed. So I would not uh, accept urban forestry's position that the proposed variance for this index is going to result in any tree impacts whatsoever. Right. I think they do in fair talk about loss of viable area to plant trees, but the existing trees, which you think, you know, would be at risk is not, you're saying is not at risk. And the intent is to protect and maintain that tree and to fence it off and uh, do a protection zone and all those fancy things. Correct. That is correct. So the front yard landscaping on the subject site that is proposed is at 80.77%, which is more than the 75% that the zoning bylaw requires as a minimum. The rear yard landscaping is at 56.4%, and that is more than the 50% than the zoning bylaw requires as a minimum. So there is more than ample space, both in the front and in the rear yard to plant any sure trees that the owner may wish to plant. We'll emphasize that there are no tree removals, so there's no tree replacement that is required. So that would be at the owner's discretion to plant trees, but there's plenty of space for that. In terms of floor space index, you'll see the proposal at 0 0.8. It sits beside a building that is uh, smaller. It's about 0 0.35 to the west and a building that is larger, that is at about 0 0.59 floor space index. So the proposal at 0 0.48 is actually right in between what those two dwellings are. It's a conventional two-story dwelling, and we'll see that in the next slide. Slide number two. Right hand, upper right-hand side is the proposed dwelling. So it's a conventional two stories living space facing the front at ground level very close to grade second story is right above it the original proposal is off to the upper left just by way of comparison it was two levels of living above an integral garage what you'll see just below those two boxes at the top are is a series of photographs of dwellings that are nearby so in terms of height mass scale we'll see 
two stories, three stories, integral garages, no integral garages, and we'll see multiplexes as well as detached dwellings. So in terms of physical form, in terms of height, mass, and scale, the proposal accommodates an, an appropriate conventional fit. And I've already, uh, Mr. Chairman's indicated that the, that the Long Branch Guidelines material has been submitted. Um, so we're, we've seen the planning staff report and we're- Can you wrap up Mr. Lemmermano, please? The planning staff report recommends yep. that the, uh, the development be constructed substantially in accordance with the elevation plans that were submitted and that is acceptable. So subject to any questions, I submit that the four variances are minor in nature and result in no adverse impact. Thank you, Mr. Romano. I just want to clarify, I reread that planning, that the forestry memo, and it was both a little bit of a grammatic, there should have been the word and in there, but they were concerned both with viable planning space and city-owned trees one and two. Meanwhile, they already have two city-owned trees, how much more planting room do they need? Um, but I just wanted to clarify those who were both concerns and so thank you for that and for your presentation. Anyone have any questions for Mr. Romano? And if not, is someone ready to weigh in with a motion? Mr. Palmer, thank you. Um, yeah, uh, thanks for revising um, the applications and bringing it back to us. It uh, looks like you've done a lot of work um, to address uh, planning's comments and concerns. So I'm ready to move approval. Uh, variances requested are minor in nature and meet the four tests in the Planning Act. Uh, and that would be subject to uh, planning conditions, tying it to the elevation plan dated uh, August 16th as it relates to the design and exterior cladding materials and subject to forestry um, condition number one, if that's required, I guess. And that's it. Okay, thank you. Uh, although he's saying there isn't an intent to injure a tree, but I guess that would be the follow-up uh, in the event, Mr. Romano, can you assist here? I guess they still need that condition. There are trees within six meters of the property, so it's an appropriate condition to place on it. Thank you. Okay, for thank the opportunity. you. Okay, Mr. Palmer, thank you for the motion. Is a seconder for that. Ms. Ruddick, thank you. All in favor, you have unanimous approval. Thank you, Mr. Romano. We'll see you again. Thank you. Appreciate it. Enjoy your day. Our next application is item number 257, the ladder court, or the later court. Second story rear addition above the existing dwelling with three variants. This matter was deferred from the June 30th meeting. And uh, we have a cover letter. Uh, we have a memo from forestry and, and the, the materials from the previous hearing. The speaker from this application is Mr. Tang. Ms. Tang, I'm not sure. Z Tang. Hello. 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 Hi, dear community. I am Xu Dong Tang from Countdown Design, and uh, I'm here to represent Ganesh Mohan, the owner of Seven Barata Com. Okay, so uh, can you, you were uh, at committee in uh, June, June yes. 30th? So let me explain. So I was, so I thought the zoning examiner sent me the wrong notice so i applied for a deferral and i after i discussed with the zoning examiner turns out she was right at the first place so i yes. haven't changed anything keep the uh, exist uh, the original minor variance application okay okay and then we got some of the in the additional materials we've got a site plan a second floor uh addition above showing um so members any questions for the agent do you need me to do the presentation it's uh quite minor and major okay you want to do a present if you feel you need a presentation uh, members i i 
if you need me to do it, I will do it. I think yeah, that's what I'm, I'm like, just asking the members if they any of them feel they need a presentation on this. Okay, uh, so let's see if they just have any questions for you. So there were no changes. It was just a matter of notice, and uh, you didn't make any changes since you were here last time. Yes. Thank you. There's no forestry condition. Actually, there's nothing from any city department. So I would say that it's a relatively straightforward application and I move for approval. I believe it meets the four tests under the Planning Act and there are no conditions. Thank you, Ms. Alderson. Second for Ms. Alderson's motion. Thank you, Ms. Ruddick. All in favor? You have unanimous approval. Thank you, Mr. Tang. Approval. Thank you. Thank you. Next item is item number 26. Uh, 112 Newcastle Street was deferred from the July 14th, 2022 hearing. It's an application to construct an attached, new detached dwelling with an attached garage. There are five variances. And um, we have um, Metrolink's advisory materials from the previous hearing we have uh forestry is looking for a refusal denial of variance four and planning uh has weighed in and want in the event of approval is asking to be constructed as illustrated as in, uh, on the on the elevations as it was as a result of the side wall main height and that's all we have we have one speaker on this application who is bill ross Mr. Ross there? So we did have an issue hearing him earlier on the sound check, um, but he's been on the call. Oh. I hear someone very faintly say hello. German. Now. You hear someone very faint. German, can you hear? hearing things. Bill, do you want to call in because we really can't hear you? Okay, Mr. Chair, why don't we move on to item 27 and give Mr. Ross a chance to call in? Okay, I was going to say this. Good idea. Item number 27, the last item on our agenda is 51 Creighton Avenue. It's an application to construct a one story rear addition, a one story front addition, and a second story addition above the existing dwelling, and to add a second living unit. Uh, please note this file was deferred on August 18th. 2022 in order to correct missed variances. Oh, that was helpful right on the purpose. Um, I mean, what the reason for the deferral was. Uh, so we have three variances. Uh, copy of, um, we actually just have the Met Metrolink's comments and uh, uh, the materials from the previous hearing. So we have nothing uh, on this uh, on this file. Speaker is Michaela Silva. Welcome, Ms. Uh, Silva. Hi, good afternoon, Mr. Chair and uh, committee members. Uh, so my name is Michaela Silva from 31 Lacey Avenue, and I am the applicant for 51 Creighton Avenue. Okay, four very simple variances. It looks like the reason for the deferral mm -hmm. was not uh, anything untoward. You didn't have to make changes. It was just one an issue behind mm -hmm. your control. And they told us that right in the mm -hmm. notice. I've never seen that. So that's wonderful. Uh, yeah. Anything you'd like to advise the committee, or I'll see if it's just they, if they have any questions. I don't think we need a some presentation. Michaela, is there anything you'd like to advise the committee members? Oh, sorry about that. Uh, no, I mean, uh, like you said, uh, you know, the cover letter pretty much explains uh, the variance that I was missing on the public hearing notice. And so that's why 
you know, um, we had to defer the application. And uh, if the committee has any wants me to do a, you know, a small um, presentation, then I'll be happy to. Or if they have any questions as well. Okay. Thank you. Any questions for Ms. Silva? Mr. Palmer, are you, are you talking? Because it sounds like you're muted. No, I was just Can't muttering hear. to myself. You're muttering to yourself, mm -hmm. okay. Um, I'm happy to make a motion uh, to approve. This is a pretty straightforward application. There was a, a, a notice error and that has been corrected and was sent out. So uh, happy to move for approval. I believe it meets the four tests and uh, there are no conditions. Thank you, Ms. Alderson. Seconded by Ms. Ruddick, thank you. All in favor? Unanimous approval. Thank you, Ms. Silva, see you again. Have a good afternoon. Uh, now we'll go back to and see, hopefully, met Bill Ross on item number 26, which we just introduced. It's a new detached dwelling. It was deferred on July the 14th. We have planning condition. Construct as illustrated. Side Mount Mainwall Height. It's Mr. Ross here. So uh, Mr. Ross is currently trying to call in. So we'll just stand by for that. Bill, can you hear us? Yep. Awesome. Thank you. Can you, can you hear me now? Yes, we can. We now hear you with an echo, but we hear you at least. Okay. Okay. I'm just going to hang up my phone here. Mr. Ross, you still with us? Okay, he so, hung up on himself. He hung up yeah. the wrong device, I guess. Okay, so we're just going to wait for him to call back in. Is he calling from another continent? Even that shouldn't be an issue these days. 
Bill, can you hear me? Hello. Hi, Bill. Okay, Hello. you're back on the call. Just don't hang up your phone. Yes, thank you. Okay. No. <laughs> can you you can hear me now? Yes, we can. Mm -hmm. Oh, great. Thank you. Sorry about that, Mr. Chairman. Uh, so we've um, the last we were at uh, the last we were at committee, we actually uh, we deferred the application to speak to the planning department, and we've we've done that and obtained, basically obtained their approval on the application. Uh, the only thing that they were concerned about uh, was that it be tied to uh, the four elevations, north, south, east, and west. And the, in their comments here, it says, the initial concerns of the planning staff have been satisfactorily addressed by these revisions. As such, the Committee of Adjustment choose to approve the minor variance application. The plan planning recommends that the uh, inclusion of those four uh, elevations in the building. Right, as to as it relates to the side main wall height. Okay, thank you. Um, was there a planning issue? Was there a forestry issue on this? Yeah, they want it denied. The application. I was asking Mr. Mr. Ross, can you comment on the planning uh, on the planning uh, memo? I. Well, there's a tree that's right, I was right beside the house. I guess it's uh, basically on the property line, but it looks like it's just at the edge of the property line. Okay. Uh, and I, it would have to go. Mm -hmm. Okay, so... Um, but, but we couldn't, it's in a, in a position where we yes. really can't develop the lot if we don't take the tree down. Yeah. And I believe, as we just learned in a recent seminar, it, it's the variance that has to trigger the damage or injury, potential injury to the tree, not if you build as a right. So whatever you were to build here, even within the bylaw. Well, yeah, whatever we would build there would be, the, the concern would be the same. Uh, Right, right now, it looks like you have to get the trees right almost on the property line, and, and we only need a three-foot side yard. So if they put a three-foot side yard there instead of a, a, a smaller side yard of about two okay, feet. So your, okay, so your position is you, and, have, uh, you can't save this tree, right? Right. Okay, thank you, Mr. Ross. Anything else you'd like to add before I see if members have any questions? No, it's just just that we've uh, changed the roof line, reduced the uh, the wall height for around the whole building. The actual height to higher than nine point two two is uh, the parapet at the front wall of the house. It's, it, it moves up to make yeah. the the front okay. facade straight. And so as you read out from Daniel, foot yeah, wide. As you, yeah. you read from Daniel yeah. Kaminsky's Kolominsky's memo that they are now satisfied with the changes you made, right? Right. Right. Okay. So does anyone have, so the only issue is the tree, which is right in the front yard. Um, members, any questions for Mr. Ross or some ready to weigh in with a motion? So you're okay with urban forestry's condition number one then? I'm sorry. I don't know what the, I, I don't have that. Uh... Urban you would have to apply for a permit to injure a city-owned tree. Oh, yes, of course. Okay. In that case, I'm prepared to make a motion. Great. Uh, I believe this meets the four tests in the Planning Act and uh, move for approval subject to urban forestry condition number one. Thank you, Ms. Alderson. Seconder. Mr. Palmer, thank you. All in favor? But just a friendly amendment, I think it's also tied to... Um, yes, I think it's tied to some community planning. Yeah, yeah some elevation plans. Um, yeah, please make that friendly amendment. I don't have it in front of me. Yeah, all as Mr. Ross said, it's all four elevations as it respects to the side main wall height. Plans dated June 29th. June 29th as it relates to main wall height, yes. Yeah, okay, 
Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Um, and urban forestry number one. All in favor? Have a unanimous approval, Mr. Be well. And again, motion to uh, adjourn. Um, that was our last application. I don't want to do that. No, that's what we <laughs> having way too much fun. Okay. Yes, motion to adjourn. Okay, thank you. Seconded by Mr. Palmer. Thank you. Okay, we're adjourned, Hello, everyone. everyone. Thank everyone. you, everyone. Staff. A wonderful a last weekend, welcome everyone. to September. Happy Labor yes. Day weekend. Yes, happy Labor Day weekend. Safe. Bye bye. Okay, bye. Thanks to all the staff for all their hard work behind the scenes. And uh, Olivia for being the moderator today. Thank you. You're welcome. Have a nice, lovely evening. <laughs>